The day Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi submitted his resignation, crowds in Tahrir Square showed no intention of packing up and going home. Banners were still held high, doctors remained on standby to treat the wounded, and new street art sprung to life, depicting the aspirations of the protest movement. For many, the Prime Minister's departure is just the first, perhaps the easiest step on a long road towards change. They want Parliament dissolved and fresh elections to be held under a new election law. The problem is not just the Prime Minister, it's not the Queen, it's a whole beehive. All of them have to resign. If the Prime Minister leaves, someone that's similar to him will replace him. It's a fear that risks becoming a reality. In an emergency cabinet meeting, Abdel Mahdi said he would stay on as part of a caretaker government until Parliament chose his replacement. There is no doubt that the Council and its parties and members will oversee the finding of an appropriate solution as fast as possible. Because the country in these circumstances cannot endure a caretaker government for a long time, so I want the Parliament to complete the procedures to appoint a new Prime Minister and government. That process could take weeks, even months, and requires buy-in from local and foreign power brokers. For sure, the political parties are facing a difficult exam. They can't go back to the balance of power that used to be in place. They have to come up with an extraordinary government, which has to complete the process of passing a new election law that is agreed by the protesters. But reforms won't bring the victims back, nor will they appease those who mourn them. As the death toll rises, demands for justice grow louder. Hanan Zuhair comes to Tahrir Square every week to pray for the victims. She doesn't just want Abdel Mahdi to leave, she wants his government to be held accountable. Not just him, those who opened fire, those who gave the order. This is blood, this is the blood of the people of the youth. What's their guilt? They're bridegrooms and they go to the graves. Instead of celebrating their wedding, they're stained with blood. All those responsible for that bloodshed should be punished. The government has promised to investigate the most recent violence, but as the focus shifts towards appointing a new prime minister, such promises risk being forgotten. Demonstrators have welcomed Abdel Mahdi's offer to resign, but their joy is overshadowed by uncertainty over whether he will really leave and what will happen next. Without big changes to Iraq's electoral law, many fear that whoever succeeds him will simply carry on with what they see as the same failed political system. Simona Foltin, Al Jazeera, Baghdad. Bilal Wahab is an Iraq analyst at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. He says the resignation of Mahdi puts the entire Iraqi political system in uncharted territory. The resignation of the prime minister automatically means the resignation of the entire cabinet. And this is the first time that this happens in Iraq, so the legal ways forward are not necessarily clear. But uh, one way or another, there has to be a new, the president has to give mandate to a new person or a new bloc in parliament to form a new government. Uh, the prime minister in his resignation letter specifically said that Iraq needs a permanent government rather than a caretaker government, something that the street have requested uh, the latter, a caretaker government that, you know, runs the affairs until new elections are, are in place for a new system to be in place. I mean, Adil Abdul Mahdi was the face of this lack of accountability in the Iraqi political system rather than the system itself. So he could easily be scapegoated. In fact, it's probably overdue for him to be leaving the scene. But this is not the end of the road. Uh, Grand Ayatollah Sistani has played a significant role in channeling the protest movement into a single ask of the political leadership and of the government, obviously in the absence of strong Iraqi state institutions on the one hand, and also in the, in the absence of organized civil society, the inability of the populist and public protest movement into being translated into, into a specific ask. Uh, Grand Ayatollah Sistani has played that, uh, again, referring back to uh, Adil Abdul Mahdi's resignation letter. He doesn't say in response to the protesters, but specifically says in response to the call by Grand Ayatollah Sistani. The celebrations were instantaneous. As soon as Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi announced his intention to resign, anti-government demonstrators in Baghdad's Tahrir Square practically threw a party. 
The stunning development came a day after more than 50 people were killed by security forces in one of the bloodiest days of violence since the anti-government protests erupted in early October. It was just over a year ago that Abdel Mahdi was appointed prime minister as a consensus candidate between Iraq's political blocs. Throughout the streets on Friday, cheering, singing, even dancing. Optimism on full display. Today the Iraqi people are happy, but we only consider this as the first step. We demand the resignation of all lawmakers, and we call on the judiciary to put them on trial immediately. The protesters making it clear that cosmetic changes will not suffice. They are after a complete overhaul of the political system in Iraq. The mood here in Tahrir Square has turned celebratory, but all around us there are somber reminders of those who have lost their lives during these protests. Here you see people who are praying for the memories of anti-government demonstrators who were killed by security forces. College student Zaid Jabbar told me he and his fellow protesters are more encouraged than ever to keep coming out onto the streets. The problem isn't only Adel Abdul Mahdi, is just a cover. He wants to topple the whole regime. It's been a corrupt system for the last 16 years, a corrupt system that negatively impacts society and politics, the economy, and it's even had a psychological impact on us. Um Noor brought her whole family so they could all witness a historic moment together. Today we have to come and participate, because this Iraq is our Iraq, this country is our country, and this pain is our pain. The youth who've been demonstrating are like all our children. They have to take their rights, because corruption won't last forever. Inspiring words that may help transcend the deep pain felt by so many Iraqis praying constantly, not just for the dead, but also the living. Mohammed Jamjoum, Al Jazeera. Baghdad. Well, the unrest in Iraq has been ongoing for weeks. Protests began in the capital, Baghdad, over high unemployment and claims of corruption and spread across the country. Despite public support from key religious and political figures, by October 4, about 65 people had died in clashes with security forces. Protests subsided when the Prime Minister released a plan including subsidies and housing for the poor. But crowds returned to the streets angry with the government and what they say was Iran's influence. On November 3, the Iranian consulate in Karbala was attacked, and this week, demonstrators set fire to the Iranian consulate in Najaf, sparking another explosion in violence. The death toll from almost two months of anger now stands at at least 400. Faisal al istrabadi is a former Iraqi ambassador to the United Nations. He explained what will happen when Abdul Mahdi resigns and how it will shake up the Iraqi parliament. When the Prime Minister resigns, assuming that Parliament will accept his resignation, it is deemed that the entire Cabinet has resigned. Uh, under the Iraqi Constitution, what occurs next is that uh, the President will be acting Prime Minister, but he has a certain amount of time to name uh, a, a Prime Minister-designate, who then has 15 days to form a Cabinet. But he has to form a Cabinet and obtain the approval by a simple majority vote of the, uh, uh, of the parliament. So this is sort of mechanically what has to happen. But what is difficult to see is that the impasse that resulted in Abdul Mahdi becoming prime minister in the first place, that impasse is still in place. It's difficult to see that in a short period of time, in two weeks, the parliamentary parties will be able to agree not only on a prime minister, but on a new slate of uh, cabinet officers. We don't actually know what their positive vision is. We know what they're against. It isn't clear to me that they know what it is that they're for or how to get there. So the, the slogans are the secular state, end of corruption, opportunities for all. These are slogans. This is not a political agenda. There's no leadership to these demonstrations, it, it appears. And a way forward does not immediately present itself where it's likely to result in more chaos as in a, in a happier uh, uh, end state. That's my fear.